Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, where the topic is Innovative Capital Budgeting and Corporate Strategic Planning. My name is Doug Wellsby, and I'm the Channel Manager here at Wikrosoft. I'm also joined by my colleagues, Jim Patterson, our Director of Sales, and Matt Willey, our One Plan Product Specialist. During today's webinar, attendees will be on mute and the line will not be open for questions. However, feel free to use the GoToWebinar question feature to submit questions. I will address these questions during the webinar and will respond via email if we do not get to your specific question. If for some reason you get distracted or pulled away during the webinar, no need to worry, as I'll be emailing a link to the presentation once it has been posted to our YouTube channel. And with that, I'll now turn the presentation over to Jim. Thank you, Doug. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, excited to be here today to talk to you about this topic, innovative capital budgeting and corporate planning. A little bit of an uh, overview of what we're going to be covering topic-wise today. We're just going to go over some of the market needs and challenges that are driving the need for us to have this discussion. Uh, we'll talk about some overall capital budgeting and corporate planning concepts. And then we'll basically go through capital budgeting solution overview and demo and some next steps around those as well. So, uh, you know, really it's about managing change and planning for the future and where to put our investments. And the age of digital transformation uh, uh, is really driving the need for rapid change within organizations today. Uh, New challenges come up every day. We're dealing one right now with our health crisis. And the idea is corporations have to be able to flexibly adjust to those things and adjust the way that they're doing business and how they're going to reach their customers and how they're going to survive as businesses. Uh, this example just shows how traditional brick and mortar businesses were supplanted by a lot more uh, digital options, uh, things like uh, uh, online buying services and streaming of video content and online access to transportation and even digital ways that we get our soft drinks. But it impacts all levels of our organization. And today it's really in that kind of strategic planning, uh, planning where we're gonna invest our scarce and precious capital and, and how we can have solutions to help us adjust to that and do it in a more streamlined fashion. Because change is coming. And as we know, the speed of change just seems to continue to accelerate. Uh, market windows, uh, competitive windows, uh, they're shrinking on us so that we have to adapt quickly. And if we don't be, if we're not able to adapt quickly to those things, it can impact our success and our viability as businesses, let alone our profitability. And it really ties into um, uh, an integrated level of planning and execution. You know, at the top levels of an organization, you know, organizations and our executives have to plan their strategies, their overall missions, and what they're trying to achieve overall as their objectives for an organization. And they build overall strategic plans. You know, te technologically, they put enterprise architectures in place. There's uh, innovation and ideation to, to really make sure that we're at the cutting edge of our industries and making sure that we're working on things that are gonna move the ball forward and have this be relevant in the marketplace, which spawns new product development. And in that, we have to put performance plans and budgets in place, understand where we're gonna put our investments and our dollars. So strategically, uh, our executive teams put together uh, a blueprint for where we should be going as an organization and uh, dictating what are the right things for us to be working on. Now to those, you know, portfolios and programs are developed that should support what uh, senior leadership has come up with us as far as strategies and drivers and missions that we should have to move towards as an organization. And these uh, uh, manifest themselves as, as programs or objectives and initiatives or certain services that we might want to offer, uh, applications that we want to either develop or implement, and even you know, improve our processes like with things like Lean Six Sigma. Uh, the idea though is anything that we identify at this program or portfolio level, should align and support the success of the strategies that are outlined above. And to unpeel that onion just another level, uh, down at the initiative level where the work is actually being formed, you know, what's been defined up above now will spawn off IT projects. They could be customer facing billable projects. There could be things to maintain um, our applications or technology that we have, just general service requests, et cetera. You, know, you could even take it down to levels of to-dos and action items if you want to. 
But the idea is that those should support the portfolios and the programs, which in turn are supporting the strategies. So the idea is that we should have some method to our madness and making sure that we're working on the right things and allocating our investments and our precious resources in the right places. Now the process for doing that within an organization and determining what we should be working on, uh, this is just a high level example, but if you go to the left and figure out the start of a planning cycle, the initial planning tends to be very high level. We conduct a high level enterprise model, maybe some strategies that we wanna to work towards and maybe budget some things and at, a, at a program and a portfolio level. And part of that, which we're gonna focus on today is defining financial and operational targets as well as some of the budgetary things, whether the capital or the expense dollars that we're gonna to spend to do those things. To get to that, we probably have to push down to an execution level somewhat so that the subject matter experts can size that, tell us what it's gonna to take to do those things, create some plans to um, let's say, this is what it's gonna to take to actually execute on the things that we're planning on doing at a high level, and then have that feedback up to the executive level so that they can analyze those things, look at the consolidated results and prioritize and finalize and approve a plan that includes that information. So today we're gonna to be really talking about that higher level aspect where we're doing the capital planning and the more corporate planning and the capital budgeting uh, that these organizations do as part of this process. Um, and oftentimes, you know, the analysts like Gartner were saying that, you know, you, you need to have the right tools for the job. And at the portfolio level, they're saying that there's a, an audience there that is really interested in creating and decision frameworks to select projects and work based on the frameworks that are put in place. And the uh, planning and delivery of those investments and tracking them to see that we're actually uh, tracking to what we uh, thought we were gonna be doing, we track it at a more high level at this portfolio level. And we're using two tools like Wickersoft's One Plan uh, today to really do a lot of that top-down planning and tracking at that level. And there's a myriad of execution tools like say Microsoft Project Today and others in the marketplace and the folks that use those tools uh, and that's at those lower levels of execution that we showed you in that prior pyramid is that, but these people are interested in more project and resource management, more tactically. You know, it's more about the execution of that at a more detailed level than communicating that progress up from a bottoms up perspective back up to leadership so that they can view these things and track them at a more portfolio level. So as part of that, what is capital budgeting? Well, it really is an overall analysis of our potential projects and programs. And that includes you know, things that we already have in flight as we constantly assess whether we should still be pursuing those. Uh, new ideas or projects that are coming in that we're con contemplating embarking upon. And looking at those things from a uh, perspective of you know, where we want to invest our limited and precious capital dollars. These tend to be more long-term decisions, often multi-year exercises. They usually involve large expenditures, these larger capital projects. And they're also critical or very important to an organization's future because at this point, we're making decisions on where should we make our biggest bets? Where should we invest our capital so that our organization's future is secured and we stay ahead of the competition and we address new market opportunities and we make sure that we're relevant in that marketplace and we remain profitable over time. Uh, the trouble is that this exercise is often done in systems or spreadsheets that are typically disconnected from the project and portfolio management processes and solutions that we're going to use to execute on these projects. So it tends to be an artifact off to the side and oftentimes it's uh, not uh, uh, really analyzed in a way in a connected fashion that we can leverage that data in tandem with where we're executing. Now, there's a lot of different types of corporate planning solutions that are available today, but they typically tend to be more driven financially. They tend to be more finance focused, like your ERP and financial systems. And what we'd like to do is to be able to more integrate capital expenditure planning um, and be able to extend the more financial focused planning to include the capital investment in specific initiatives or projects and be able to allow the operational managers at that level to be able to model the capex on capital projects over multi-year periods and have them aligned or tied to specific initiatives at that point so that that information is not only available in the ERP and financial system but also to the folks that are managing the individual portfolios programs and projects that are being uh, decided upon 
And then just from an integrated portfolio planning, we want to also still extend that financial focus into providing a link uh, meaningfully to the plans that are being used to execute and manage the individual projects and understand how we're tracking against those things and be able to have that tracking uh, bubble up to the higher strategic levels so that uh, leadership can be comfortable with the fact that where they made their investments and the basis on which they made those investments that it looks like things are still tracking according to plan. So if we look at an integrated system, which is our vision, we want to really apply a standard integrated or logical approach to both developing, estimating, selecting, approving, and monitoring capital investments. Uh, the best case would be to have a single source of truth for not only the portfolio planning and budgeting process, uh, the request and approval of those uh, requests, meaning uh, automating that and having it go through workflow and having the right data being captured uh, online so it's available for analysis and reporting. And a component of those requests could then be the capital budgeting, where we not only uh, establish those budgets and submit the request for those, but we get the approval for CapEx and the ability to spend that and actually get funded for that. And then as we uh, get approved for that or after we get approved for that, we continually forecast on the project to see if it's still going to take what we thought it was going to take. And on top of that forecasting, we also do tracking and reporting against that to see and manage and adjust to the changing realities on the ground as we're working on those projects. Uh, all the while, we want to be flexible so that we can adjust and change and uh, uh, adapt to the needs and priorities that are uh, calling for the need for uh, capital investment. So. To give you a little bit of a solution overview of the things we're going to be talking about today, we're going to be talking to you about uh, one plan, which is a, a, a solution that is executed, and we're going to show it to you today in Microsoft's Power Apps and Power Platform. But it's a tool that will allow you to connect strategy to that execution. And we're going to focus on the strategy pieces today, but be aware part of the strength is because that we can actually take those strategic plans and tie them to specific executions that are happening with individual projects. And even a flexibility to tie them to different work execution tools, whether it be Project for the Web, Project Professional, or Azure DevOps from our Agile projects, just from a Microsoft perspective, but also can leverage non-Microsoft tools like Jira and other things like that that are popular out there today. So in this type of solution is the focus on capturing overall demand. And in that case, we want to capture all types of demand types and requests, uh, be able to capture all the data points for the types of requests that they are and put them through the requisite workflow, and be able to have forms that are online with uh, digital data that's available, not in some documents or spreadsheets that are separate from the process, and allow us to make decisions based upon that data through visibility so we can prioritize and make sure that we're working on the right things that align with our strategy. Uh, the idea is to uh, capture the things that we need and be able to analyze that. I've got some examples here on the right-hand side that are showing them you know, in the Power Platform to show them in a more SharePoint-based type of capital budgeting system or in just an ideation system that's based in Office 365. The idea here is, is that we want to have a central funnel and a single place to capture that work regardless of how it's going to be executed. And part of that could be the beginning of the capital budgeting process, to be able to capture all capital budgeting requests and be able to manage uh, the uh, assertions on benefits and expenses through the life of that portfolio. The idea is to be able to uh, capture what we want to budget, possibly look at what's been funded actually, and then look at the revised forecast and the actuals potentially of what we're looking at. And if we've stated some benefits in there, let's track to the benefits and see if we are, um, we're receiving the benefits that we thought we were gonna achieve. So the idea is to be able to do all this and with some uh, um, connector technology, be able to, and uh, Wickersoft One Connect is, is one that has productized connectors, to be able to tie all this to your financial systems is that if that's where part of your corporate planning is being done. And then as we uh, decide on what this portfolio or mix of projects and initiatives that we should be working on, to be able to uh, manage the full planning and execution through its entire life cycle. Not only budget it, but plan it, execute it, 
uh, monitor the actuals and the progress, and make adjustments all the way through the life of that. And the idea is to be able to have as a natural output dashboards and analytics that tell us the health of these things as we go through uh, these life cycles. And the advanced portfolio and analytics and status reports in a common solution rather than in separate spreadsheets or Word documents or PowerPoints allows you to tap into that as business intelligence and be able to analyze things in a way that makes it quick for us to assess where we're at and use it as decision support to decide where we need to course correct when that's happening. And that could be at for overall health, it could be based upon the requests that are coming in and the priorities and the, and the investment requirements for those, or even just the financial health of the ongoing projects that we have. And then all the solutions we're going to talk to you about today and all the capabilities are really based on a modern user experience. And, you know, we're going to be demonstrating uh, one plan today in Microsoft's Power Apps um, and uh, be able to use a more modern, sleek user experience to be able to uh, uh, get these capabilities, whether it be from uh, request parameters, business cases, financial aspects, uh, resource demands or uh, uh, requirements to do these things and be able to do assessments of that. Uh, it's uh, the ability to do that in a common solution in a more uh, modern, easy to use interface is something that's uh, in demand by the marketplace today. And then as I mentioned earlier on, we can integrate your teams once we decide on those projects to use the planning tools or the execution tools that are right for the job or right for the type of project that you're gonna work with. And just to elaborate on that, we are gonna show this to you uh, with one plan in Microsoft Power Apps today. And Wickersoft has a number of pre-configured Power App solutions to do the things that we're gonna show you here in the demonstration today. Uh, but also be aware that because it is a Microsoft based solution, uh, one plan is built on the Microsoft Office 365 and Power Platform, meaning users can access these capabilities from within Microsoft Teams and Office 365 or from within Project Online, if you're using that today, or from SharePoint or Dynamics, or even in Azure DevOps uh, for the more software development environment folks. Uh, so just be aware that even when we're going to focus on that today, there's other mechanisms by which we can surface the capabilities. So with that, I will turn it over. All right. So I'm logged in here into um, Power Apps, and I'm using my same login that I always use to log into Office 365 as well as the Power Platform. And I have access to all of my other capabilities here, for example, things like Power BI, which we'll see a little bit later on. Um, as I go through today, we'll start out with an initial request. So this very, you know, starts out with a very uh, light request that someone puts in or a high level idea of, hey, this is something that we think we should do. And we can put in some very basic information around that, like how much estimated cost we think it might take to do it and what we think we might get from it in a benefits perspective. Based on the information that you capture at this initial phase, we can start to roll up and get a very high level prioritization score, or a better idea of how much value do we think we might get for this particular project. I look at it like a funnel. We may, might get a ton of different ideas, a ton of different requests that come in. We need to start to funnel those down. And this can be the first step to doing that just with some basic information. If it looks like something that we might want to do and we might want to do in the possible near future, then we can utilize Flow to promote this into our list of projects. So it's no longer an idea. It gets promoted over into my actual project list. But at this point, it's still in a very early stage, in my create stage when I go in to start to build out this project. So I'm going to go into one of my projects here that's still in that early stage, the social networking integration project here. And we can take a look at what it looks like as you progress through this process. So as we go through this, we're going to want to capture some more information before we give you possibly hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars to go work on this project. We need to do a lot more research, put more information in and go through a workflow here to figure out what we're going to do, when we're going to do it, where's the best places to spend our money, specifically our capital for these new things that we're building. In this case, you can see here I have a general tab where I can set uh, pieces of information like what portfolio is this aligned to, what program possibly or product, who's going to be the manager of this, who's going to start to build this out, so on and so forth. There's also a bus business case tab here that I can utilize to put in more narrative around this particular project, a little description around what it's going to do, what's the business case and what's the value statement of what this is going to give us as a business. 
Down below, I can take my prioritization a step further and I can put in more information here, like how strategically aligned is this to my business objectives? How much do I want to improve employee retention? Uh, is it going to lower cost, risk, so on and so forth? Or I can do a more agile approach using WSJF or weighted shortest job first to set things like business value, risk reduction, time criticality, and swag. How big is this uh, to get my WSJF score here? Or any other scoring or prioritization method you might want to use. The idea here is we've now put in enough information to better understand what the benefits of this particular project are. Um, next, we'll get into more of the financial side of that, right? We can come in here and we need to build out a budget and a more detailed budget. Is it going to be a multi-year project, a single year project, just a few months? What types of costs are we? How much capital? How much expense? We need to do that breakout. Um, how much of its labor? How much of its other, you know, so on and so forth, right? And so what I'm now switched over to is into the one plan financial planner here. And you can see I can start to build out my budget. I can break that budget down into my labor costs, materials and supplies, travel expenses or other, um, as well as this is configurable. So we would configure this to match your particular cost structure to track the cost in the way that makes sense to your organization and how your financial department needs to see that. Um, I can also break these out, as you can see here, into capital and operational expenses. And if I switch my view, then you can see here I'm asking for $215,000 of expense and $404,000 of capital. That all rolls up to give me a total of about $620,000 uh, that I think I'm going to need to complete this project over the next four-ish quarters here, as you can see. Right now I'm planning by quarter, but if I wanted to do more detail, I could plan by month or I could plan by year, up to you at whatever level of detail that you need to plan at before you go and submit this request for approval. <clears throat> Once you're ready, you can use the business process flow across the top here uh, to create a flow that's going to route this for approval to all of the right people. And there might be multiple rounds of approvals as well, depending on how your process flows. And so we can utilize the flow capabilities through the Power Automate uh, app within Office 365 to route those to the right people, get those approvals in real time, um, and then be able to move on through this process that we define for our particular set of projects. Um, also, if you need to do so, and many customers do have the requirement to be able to split these costs between different groups of their business, whether that be between different departments, business units, divisions, uh, between different strategic themes, however you're organizing things, and you can see I've done that here. I've said that 50% of my cost is going to go to the IT department and 50% is going to go to the product development department. We're going to partner on this and we're going to split it evenly. I could put in as many different departments or groups as necessary and put the percent split at what I want. And then it will calculate for me out of that total budget that was asked for um, how much is going to go to each department. Later on, when we start to track actual costs, we can then use these splits to break out those costs accordingly and charge the right groups accordingly as well. So now that I have both my budget uh, as well as my benefits entered into the system, um, I can choose to utilize the portfolio analysis module. Um, you know, this may be done by a portfolio manager or a steering committee or someone who's basically picking and choosing and prioritizing which projects we're going to do and when we're going to do them. This tool allows me to do what if analysis around all of my projects to figure out just that. <clears throat> So what you can see here is I'm looking at all of my different projects and I can see some financial information around these projects, things like budget, how much capital each of these projects is going to require, expense, so on and so forth here, and other financial um, indicators like ROI, for example. I could also include other things just by configuring more calculated fields like IRR, NPV, or any other metrics that you might want to utilize while doing this prioritization process. So I'm going to set this into prioritization mode, and now what I can do is I can simply drag and drop to update priority on all these projects. Some of these, by the way, are in-flight projects. Some of them are new proposed projects that are coming into the mix that I need to figure out how to align into my portfolio. And I can simply update the priority while looking at all of the metrics that I might want and have those set in my view by dragging and dropping. For example, this particular project here, I want to raise the priority. I can simply drag and drop it and align it into the right place. The projects at the top, highest priority, projects at the bottom, lowest priority, um, and you know, stacked rank from there. On top of that, then, I can look at um, from a timing perspective, you know, when are these projects being asked to be done? Um, and I'm going to flip that to look at it, say, by quarter. So you can see here again, or a timeline with dependencies, by the way, that you can set between these different projects of kind of how everything is currently laid out if we don't change anything. The 
Problem, though, is we have constraints. We only have so much money and we only have so much resources. Today, we're going to focus on the dollar side of things, but we could also do a similar uh, resource analysis on these projects as I'm going to do now. So now what I'm looking at is I popped open my financials down below and it's totaling up the costs for all of these different projects that we have coming into the mix, both with my active as well as my new ones that I've approved into my portfolio here. Um, and what I can do is I can compare that against my target. My target would be I have a certain budget for this portfolio or this program of projects that I'm looking at or this entire department's projects that I'm looking at, right? So on and so forth. And I can compare it against this target here and I can see if and where there are going to be any issues. It looks like from June till about November, I'm going to be over my $500,000 a month budget um, in some areas, quite frank, you know, very over that, you know, almost twice as much as what I have um, for my departmental budget, for example. To fix that, we can do some what if scenarios to figure out how we're going to solve this problem. There's a couple of things that we could do. One thing is we could take some of these lower priority projects, proposed and or active projects, and say, what if we put them on hold or just don't do them at all for you know a, a, a certain period of time? By unchecking them, you'll notice the bottom updates here, and that shows me that if I was to not do or put these projects on hold, how would that affect my budget? And I can continue to do that until this all goes green, until we get into um, you know you know everything back on track. Uh, the other option that I have is I can simply drag and drop and stagger some of my projects a little bit better. Take some of these lower priority projects and say, what if we delay them a quarter, multiple quarters, whatever it might be, and then see how that's going to affect my budget down here. When I get it the way I want it, I can save that scenario and I can come back to it at any time. Maybe scenario A, we don't do these four projects and we put these two projects on hold. Scenario B, we just need to delay some of these things a little bit, stagger them a little bit better. And then as a business, we can make the decisions on how we're going to go forward while still keeping within our budget constraints uh, to get these higher priority projects done. Right. From there, once you've done your portfolio analysis, you've figured out what projects you're going to do, you've made the necessary approvals and such, um, then you can start to get into more of a planning mode on your project and eventually executing on that project. And there's some capabilities here that allow you to do just that. Uh, the first thing is, uh, coming back into my project here, I can come in and as we start to cut POs or purchase orders for this particular project, uh, we can have those roll in from your financial system of choice, whether that be SAP, Oracle, PeopleSoft, whatever. Um, we have some pre-built connectors that we can utilize to connect up to your financial systems using our OneConnect product and pull that information in. Or it could be as simple as importing an Excel file with some of this information, or people can even manually create these as needed in here to track their different purchase orders against this particular project. So there's multiple ways to get this data in, but then these roll up then against your project. So you can start to see things like um, uh, how much you've spent to date, so on and so forth. <clears throat> If I click into one of these particular purchase orders, uh, you'll see here there's all the details around that purchase order. How much capital was it for? How much expense? The total amount of the purchase order. Um, and I can start to see as invoices start to uh, you know, get put against these purchase orders, we can start to see how much has actually been spent. So to date, we've spent $170,000 of capital, $20,000 of expense, total $190,000 of invoices, and what's remaining to be spent on this purchase order is $60,000. If I click on the invoices tab here, then I'll also see all of the invoices related to this particular PO, where that you know invoice dollars are coming from, which again could come in from your financial system of choice, which then all rolls back to your project. If I now come back into my financials tab in here, I can start to look at all of these different pieces of information in different ways, meaning I have budget, I've been funded a certain amount of dollars, I've cut POs or committed a certain amount of dollars to be spent in the near future, as well as I have invoices rolling back in that are gonna give me my actuals. So for example, right here, I'm looking at my budget, but if I wanted to compare my budget against what I had actually been funded, I can come here and, here and do just that. So what you'll see is, I budgeted, for example, in quarter two, $121,000 is what I asked for. I was funded $125,000. That's all good. Uh, in quarter three, though, you can see I asked for $344,000, but I've only been funded $125,000. So just because you asked for a certain amount of money for a certain amount of time, you may not be given all of that up front. You may only be given some of it, and you'll get later if you know things go well and they want to continue investing into this project. The totals over here in the side show me I asked for $620,000 over about four quarters. I was only given so far $500,000.
I may get more in the future if all goes well and I hit my milestones and so on and so forth. At the end of that, then I could also compare this against other things just as easily, against my committed dollars, the amount of POs that I've cut so far, against my actuals, so on and so forth. And I can utilize this to analyze and see where I'm at, my budget versus my actuals and what's been committed and funded and so on and so forth. At the same time, all of this information is available for reporting. So in Power BI, we can create really robust reports, and we have a set of reports out of the box that you can start from uh, to show all of these different projects and get you visibility into what's going on. You can deliver this to upper management, to stakeholders, to customers, whoever it may be that needs this information. In this case, you'll see a list of all my different projects here, the capital required, the expense required, the total investment for those projects and ROI. And I can utilize things like my pie chart since it's all connected to filter this down just to look at certain areas, certain things as that makes sense. If I go to my department cost, if you remember before, we made it so that we could split costs between different departments, certain percentages of those projects for those shared projects between multiple different departments. In this case, uh, you'll see each of those different departments, the capital required, the expense required, so on and so forth. And so you can see those breakouts here accordingly. And I could filter this down and just look at a particular portfolio program or project if I wanted to do so and see how those split apart. At the purchase orders and invoices level, we can also see how these purchase orders come in and we can show them over time. In this case, I have a breakout here by capital and expense is the stacking here. The green is my capital. The grayish color there is my expense and show how that rolls in over time, um, as well as I can do the same thing here with my invoices and see all of that and or combine them together in any other which way you might want to view the data as all possible. The data is all there and accessible. It's just a matter of, you know, what do you want to see and configuring the report to do so. So as you can see, you can start your capital planning process, capital budgeting process from start to finish all the way from idea to tracking the POs and invoices and actuals later on um, and everything in between while giving visibility to management and stakeholders, et cetera. Let's talk about, um, you know, some of the things that we've talked about here today. Uh, transformation, whether it be digital or otherwise, and the speed of change is driving the need for flexible corporate planning and capital budgeting within organizations uh, as they have to respond to that change and fund accordingly. Um, we talked about how the fact that strategic planning from the top down should align with programs and projects that we're going to execute on. So we're working on the right things. Uh, it's not good enough to just execute well. We might have to execute on the right things to bring the best benefits and returns to an organization. And that planning today is often done in tools and systems that are disconnected from the PPM and execution tools that are being used in organizations today. So bringing those together can provide uh, definite benefits, as Matthew was demonstrating. Uh, one plan provides a great platform for all PPM capabilities, and it enhances all aspects of top-down strategic planning and analysis. But it also extends existing solutions that you might have or the, the, the use of your existing Microsoft platforms to provide enhanced visual planning and analytics. It, that includes the reporting that Matthew showed you as well. And one plan is fully integrated, embedded in the Microsoft Cloud. So whether you're using it in, in the context of Power Apps that uh, Matthew was showing today, or within SharePoint, or within Teams, or uh, within uh, Dynamics, those things are all available to you to get these benefits to synergize and extend what you're doing with those tools today. Just a little bit about Wickersoft. Uh, we are a global company that was uh, founded as a joint venture with Microsoft back in 2002. Uh, we are multi-gold certified, but we spend a good majority of our time working in the disciplines of project and portfolio management. Uh, we were fortunate enough to be actually uh, uh, named Microsoft's 2019 Worldwide PPM Partner of the Year. Uh, so we have a lot of good uh, uh, experience and capabilities and subject matter expertise to help you put best practices in place. And we're here to support you to whatever level that uh, you might want. Uh, we have a full service set of consulting, technically, and advisory services, whether it be implementation services for putting solutions like this in place, the education and training to help you in these disciplines, as well as to get proficient in the use of these tools, and even ongoing customer success and support to support you ongoing as you're emerging in these capabilities within your organization. We even have an advisory services consulting branch that actually can help you with things like uh, a PMO stand up and putting best practices in place and change management, et cetera, and even uh, transitioning into more agile types of things. The idea here is, is not everyone leverages all these solutions, uh, services from us, but we're here to support you in whatever dimension that you need. 
Uh, for those of you that have registered here today, um, we have a special offer of a free PPM roadmap session to determine what it might take to get you into the capabilities that you witness today. Uh, that includes a, a discovery and review of your current use of PPM tools or the variety of tools you might be using today. Uh, assess your current requirements and kind of the things that might be missing in your desired future state. And then determine how to implement or migrate into a new PPM solution uh, uh, that has these modern capabilities that was demonstrated to you earlier. Uh, and then we provide you an implementation roadmap for the best adoption success, how you could phase this out in chunks. Not everybody can bite off all the things you saw today in one, in, in one chunk, and also give you an idea of what that might cost from a total cost of ownership evaluation. Um, if you want to uh, trial the one plan capabilities that you saw here today, uh, we are up on Microsoft's App Source. And you can find us up there at uh, uh, One Plan Adaptive Project and Portfolio Management or some variations of that theme. And the idea here is, is that you can trial it. Uh, we would love to engage with you so we can chaperone you through that uh, so that we can help you uh, get the most out of your investment in time in looking at the capabilities within One Plan. So from a next step perspective, definitely the PPM roadmap session is available to you. And I would say do that if you're serious about making a move. Um, if you're kind of looking and want to get an idea of the look and feel and what it's like to work with it, and you are at least semi-serious about making a move to a tool, we're happy to give you a Wickersoft chaperone trial experience and then work with you to make sure you get the most out of that. And this was a generalized demo today. So if you're really just still early on in gathering information, we're happy to schedule a one-on-one -on -one personalized demo that uh, addresses your specific requirements uh, as a follow-on to this as well. Uh, either way, we would love to engage with you and see how we might support you or uh, explore your curiosity into what these solutions can do. We do have a whole library of on-demand and a list of upcoming webinars at us.wickersoft.com slash webinars. You can reach out to us generally at contact us at wickersoft.com if you like, or you can reach out to me, Jim Patterson, directly at jpatterson at wickersoft.com if you so choose. With that, I'd like to just thank you for investing some of your valuable day and spending time with us to listen to this webinar and, and watch uh, some of the content. Uh, we hope to engage with you. Uh, have, a, have a great day.